Roy Moore, a former Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, was best known for his history of fringe views, religious extremism, and refusal to obey federal court orders. But he managed to defeat an established favorite in his party's primary for the seat, despite or be, perhaps because of all that. But on November 9th, the Washington Post, Stephanie McCrewman, Beth Reinhardt, and Alice Kreitz added scandal to the mix by publishing a story in which an Alabama woman alleged on the record that, record that when she was 14 years old in the late 1970s, Moore initiated a sexual encounter with her. This comes from an article on the box, and it was written a week after the allegations on Roy Moore came forth. Now, since this article was posted, several more women have come forward accusing him of similar actions, some as simple as he was trying to date them in their teenage years, but some as serious as a sexual assault. Before this came out, Roy Moore was already on the ballot for the December 12th runoff election for the U.S. Senate vacated by former Senator Jeff Sessions. Since this time, there have been some strong public reactions. The Republican Party has pulled their support for Roy Moore, and senators and ministers have spoken out against Moore. And yet, all the while, he has never admitted to any of these actions or has not been convicted or even tried of these allegations. The Sixth Amendment states, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. This means that man is innocent until proven guilty and he has the inalienable right to a fair trial. The media is giving more the exact opposite and acting as if he is obligated to prove his own innocence. People are not remembering the law and the Constitution in which the Sixth Amendment is written. The Sixth Amendment is being forgotten depending on who or what is being accused. Like with the Roy Moore case, he is being accused of something that may or may not be true, but he is being treated as if, as if he is already a convicted criminal. Students in 75% of America's top schools are not innocent until proven guilty. And in a poll, which you can see here on the graph, 65% of Democrats, 77% of Republicans, and 67% of Independents told researchers that they agreed with the statement, students accused of crimes on college campuses should receive the same civil liberties protections from their colleges that they receive in the court system. This example goes to show that no matter where you are, this can be a problem and this could be any of us, whether among the adults in politics or teenagers and young adults in colleges and high schools, people are being told they are guilty and have to prove their own innocence. The Constitution speaks directly against this and this is exactly why this amendment was ratified. Though from the media standpoint, we have to prove innocence, the law says that we are innocent until proven guilty. And we should stand by the law in the Constitution where the Sixth Amendment lies. One way we can stand by what our founding fathers and the law says is to remind people what is written because we're supposed to follow it. Because it was written so long ago, few people actually read the Constitution and the law or even know what it says. So, but if we prepare ourselves and we read what the law says, we can speak out against situations in the media and we can speak out against cases such as Roy Moore's. Because no matter the allegations made on anyone or how horrific they may be, no one is supposed to be guilty until proven so. People make false accusations, right? The answer is yes. On many occasions, men and women have been falsely accused. But down the road, before their trial, their innocence was proven. But by that time, their life was already in a jumbled mess. Their future changes, their reputation changes, and their family life at home has already changed, and it will never go back to the way it was because of these false accusations. When speaking with Diane Fowler, an independent paralegal, she stated the following. The media will take the small things and make them grow into something bigger than it is. Unless it is seen or they have admitted to the crime, the evidence is not real and it will not and cannot stand in the court of law. The Sixth Amendment was not written to protect the guilty, but to protect the innocent.
With this being said, we can make the choice to either believe what the media tells us or to have faith in the law and in the Constitution. We need to at least put ourselves in the spots of the ones being told they are guilty without a trial, even if we believe the accusations that are being made are true. By keeping our beliefs in the law, we can avoid any potentially, potentially horrible situations. There are only a few ways to support your decision. Before you should make a decision to support someone with allegations made against them, you need to read up on the situation so you're familiar with it. But always remember that accusations are not always the truth, or at least the whole truth. On many occasions, there is some truth to the allegations made against someone, but it's never the full story. I encourage you all to remember what the law says. And I want to leave you with a question. And that question is, if you were being accused of something, would you want to be what the media says and be guilty until you can prove your own innocence? Or would you want to go with what the Sixth Amendment says and be innocent until you're proven guilty? Do you have any questions? I have one. Okay. Um, let's see. Recently, there was a pastor in Huntsville, Alabama, who um, was arrested for not reporting um, something to child social services. And basically, what happened to him was he was arrested, and then it got out in the media, and that his his whole reputation was slandered, like from from a sense everybody was commenting on on um, social media, everybody was commenting that he was guilty, he was a pig, he was uh, disgusting, he needed to be, you know, just those types of things. So what, do you know anything about maybe um, what the, what the cause of this is? Is, is it, does it have to do with trying to get a story out first or something like that? I think kind of taking what Diane Fowler says, the media does make things bigger than they are, but <laughs> that's all I have. <laughs> I can technically cut that part. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. I was just trying. It's okay. But that's why I like the questions before. 